Hey there, everybody. This is Chris with homes in 719.com. Uh, this video is just to kind of show you guys a quick, brief understanding of what kind of documents you should expect if you're a seller uh, in Colorado in 2020, what the, the typical consumer looks, looks at for forms. Um, and, and kind of give you a rough idea what each one is for. This is not meant to be a full-blown legal review of each form and the importance in your situation. Um, this is more a summary uh, for you to look at prior to working with any agent or myself to uh, kind of know what you're going to be getting into. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, so here we are in a program that most realtors in Colorado use. It's called CTME, and it kind of shows us all the forms that we have available to us that we can select from and use. Uh, in Colorado, the state does require all realtors use these forms. However, uh, you'll see here at the bottom there are some additional forms that attorneys developer provide to the brokerages to use that maybe have a little bit more protection for you in the brokerage and you'll see those at the bottom when we get down there but effectively here's the whole list of forms we get to choose from um, when we're building out um, or buying and selling real estate so this video is specifically about a seller and the forms that they would need to use um, or, or look forward to seeing from their agent the first one is an exclusive right to list contract um right to sell listing contract and that form is a contract between the seller and the realtor and define all of the um conditions for which and services for which the realtor is going to provide now in colorado realtors always have to provide if on full service is my understanding so we really can't say, I'm not going to do this for you. I'm not going to do that for you. We have to do everything we normally would do. Um, there's different types of representation being a transaction broker. Um, we can represent as, as a uh, customer um, or as your agent. And those all have different legal uh, ramifications. And you'll see those outlined in this document. But if you don't understand it, make sure you ask your agent to more clearly explain them. Um, but it's important in here for you to look for things like um, you know, if you want staging included or you want certain things included with your listing, then make sure you talk about that with your agent. It, it, it really is a contract between the seller and the agent as to what you want them to do or what they've offered to do and what you've agreed to let them do and or compensate them for or not. Um, you want all those terms and conditions outlined in there so that you understand what the agent is going to do and not do when it comes to marketing your property. Um, because the things down the road that come up that maybe you say later, hey, I want staging done. Well, if it's not in here now, then it's back open for negotiation. Who's going to pay for that? Uh, some people would say, hey, well, that's a marketing cost. The realtor needs to pay for that. Uh, the, the agent would likely say, no, that's not in the marketing thing because we didn't agree to that. Um, or they might say, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to do that. It all depends on the agent um, and the seller and how they work out that contract. Okay. Further down the road. We've got uh, the lead-based paint disclosure. If your home was built before 1978, you'll look to see um, they should be sending you a lead-based paint obligation of the seller uh, form so you understand what your obligations are to the buyer as far as notifying them what's going on with lead paint in your home. Uh, seller's property disclosure. I do have another video on my channel all about this form because it confuses most sellers, but it is a form designed for you to tell the buyer everything you know about all the defects of your house fixed or not so let's say you had a leak in the basement and you fixed it you still have to tell them there was a leak and that you fixed it um, and that's so that the buyer has the exact same view and opinion of your home as you do um, additionally let's say you have a crazy neighbor um, and it yells and screams all the time honestly you really need to disclose that so that the buyer knows that there's this neighbor that screams all the time because later down the road they can say the buyer can tell you, hey, um, you knew that and you didn't tell me and now I moved into this house and I can't take that. Um, so you just need to disclose that. If you have dogs that bark next door, I would disclose that too. Um, get everything out there. Disclose everything you possibly can. Tell them. Disclose everything you can about that property so they have the same view of that home as you do. Um, square foot disclosure is a form that basically says, hey, Nobody has really gone through, done an official, or maybe they have, an official measurement of the home to determine the actual square footage by some um, 
common standard. In most cases, the realtor will go to the assessor site, they'll copy that information and then use that in there. And we just want to let the buyer know that so that they don't go, hey, this house is a lot smaller than you said it was. Um, and then there's a, you know, a court case and, and a dispute over, you know, whether or not this closet was or wasn't included and measured. So it, this form is really designed to keep you out of court uh, more than anything just over disputes of square footage relevant to your house. Closing instructions is a form used for the buyer, the seller, and the, and the listing agent to hire the title company to provide closing services. And uh, it kind of outlines all that. And you'll see in there um, that everybody signs it, including the title company. Um, and talks about what fees are in there as far as what the uh, uh, title company is charging for providing the closing services. Um, so that's what that one's for. Uh, agreement to amend extend. Um, so there's a different form that we probably use in this case. And it's an amend extend with the agent. I'm trying to see if it's in here. And I'm not seeing a listing contract and then extend. Yeah, that one. Listing listing contract and then extend. So that would be a possible form that would come up later, not in the first set of forms that your agent's going to send you, but later down the road, if you did want to modify and say, hey, you guys both agree that you want to add staging, well, they might do that, or you want to change the list price um, down the road, then the agent's going to give you this amend extend saying, hey, we we previously agreed I was going to list the house at this, now we're going to list it at that. Would you please sign this so you agree that um, the price should change? Because ultimately, the seller dictates what they want to sell the property for. The agent can only provide a recommendation of where, where to position the house in the market based on other houses that have sold. But ultimately the seller gets to pick what they want to sell the house for. And for that reason, anytime there's a price change, the agent needs to provide you this amend extend showing that they're changing the price up or down so that later down the road, there's not a dispute over, I didn't tell you you could lower the price of my house and now I've got an offer and it's $10,000 less than I want except for it, that kind of stuff. So we always want to document every decision throughout the process and that form is used for that. Right now in 2020, there's a couple new forms that they've added to the mix. Um, and here you'll see a couple things. First, you'll see this Colorado Association of Realtors Seller COVID-19 Advisory. And then you're going to see another one here on my form that's uh, a, a attorney has written some additional ones, um, Seller's COVID-19 Advisory. So this is the state one. This one has probably been revised by Damian Cox, which is a law firm, to include more stuff and maybe be more clear and provide more protection, hopefully. So uh, for us, we have to use this one. And it basically advises you that, hey, you know, COVID-19 is a little weird and there's some weird stuff going on and uh, it may affect, you know, you're letting people that may, may or may not be sick into your home, all these kind of fun things. So you're, you clearly understand, oh, I didn't think about the fact that I'm letting people in my house now, who's responsible for cleaning it and who, you know, all those kind of fun things. So um, how that goes. And then there's one more down here that my brokerage has and it's called a seller advisory. Um, and we give that to you, it gives a bunch more disclosures about wire fraud and a bunch of other things that you need to be aware of as a seller. So, um, you know, you're more properly informed as a consumer as to some of the risks. And I advise you to read them. It's really easy um, when you're buying and selling real estate to just say, I'm just going to sign everything here and, and you don't understand it. But these forms are provided by the state in most cases or law firms or brokerages in this one, in this case of this form to help you understand as a consumer what your risks are. Um, and for that reason, you should take your time and read it. You don't have to whip through them in a day um, and then just sign everything and then just go blindly into it. Make sure you read it. Make sure you ask questions if you don't understand you know, segments of it. And your realtor should absolutely be available to walk you through some of these forms um, and talk about your specific needs and concerns as well as maybe provide some videos. I have a couple extra videos that sometimes I send my um, my sellers just so they get, a, and again, an overview of the form. And then I give them the form and they can read it and get back to me about some specific questions. Now, additionally to that, sometimes I say, hey, we're going to get on a phone call. We're going to get on a Zoom call. 
uh, a Google Meets, and we're going to talk about this because there's some things in here I really want to make sure you understand that are very um, can be misunderstood or people don't ask about them because maybe um, they think they understand about it, but in the end they don't. So um, I've always there's a few sections on a few of these contracts where hey, I really want to have a one-on-one. -on -one uh, video call with you or in person. Let's sit down and have a coffee and go over these because you really need to understand what this is saying and what your risks are. But effectively, these are the forms that you will be getting just to start off listing your house from uh, with an agent. Now, after this, I'll do another video on this and you can look for it out there uh, on my channel and I'm, I'm going to try to sequence them and things like that. But we'll talk all about the forms that are you'll see. Um, once you start getting an offer on your home and, and what those look like so you can understand those as well. So hopefully uh, you find this video a little bit helpful and uh, if you got any updates or questions, concerns, uh, maybe ways I can improve this and just go ahead and put those in the comments and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can or maybe recut the entire video because I want to have good information out there for you guys. So uh, thanks for watching. Good luck on your transaction. Bye now.